Some tiny houses are built to travel, but then sometimes you find that little bit of paradise that just makes you want to put down roots. That's exactly the case with this next wonderful home that we're about to visit that has found an incredible parking spot here in a farm just outside of Byron Bay. G'day Emmett. Hey Bryce. Great to meet you mate. Yeah, you too. Dude, it is quite a little slice of heaven that you've found here, isn't it? Uh, I feel pretty lucky. Yeah. Tell me about this spot that you've found. Um, so this is a 40 acre organic farm and we're in the Byron Bay hinterland, pretty close to the nice beaches and all the nice little towns. So yeah, look, I've been lucky enough to just park up and not sure exactly how long I'll be here, but um, I've put some stumps in the ground and built a pretty permanent bathroom. So. Yeah, we'll just see what happens, but I'm very happy for now, yeah. So this over here is your bathroom? Yeah, it's just been finished. Very cool. Yeah. And what a great way of sort of extending your living space, because it's quite a small, tiny house that you've built over it here, is. isn't it? Yeah, single story and only four meters long. Um, so it's just for me, it's a little bachelor pad, surf shack kind of thing at the moment. So what was it that actually led you into building a tiny house on wheels? I had been sitting behind a desk for years working as a town planner, actually, for councils and the private development sector. So I was very familiar with the housing form and plans and, and design, but um, yeah, I've always been a little bit alternative in my taste for, I guess, a more sustainable built form. And I guess I'm of that generation that I just didn't want the mortgage and, and the debt and the stress that goes along with that. So I, I guess I've built this tiny house to set myself free in, in some ways. You know, I don't need as much money. And yeah, so I walked away from full-time office work and I'm um, kind of doing my own thing. And you've built this whole tiny house yourself, haven't you? Yeah, look, I had a lot of talented friends and, and people in my network um, step up. I was totally prepared to build it by myself and out of pallet wood if it came to it. But, you know, you put things out there uh, to the universe. And I was very lucky that I had, yeah, some very talented friends. Most of them just, just helped in kind or, you know, I might have done a bit of labor on their property or something in exchange. But yeah, thank you for all of the people who got involved in, you know, whether it was one day or, or a week. Yeah, I had some great helpers, so I, I can't take all the credit. Immediately looking at this house, you've got some really unique features on this one. Like, look at that geodesic window. That is incredible. <laughs> yes, so I had a, a carpentry mentor, uh, Nick, down in Melbourne, and this was actually um, born from his brain. Uh, and then when we were talking about plans for my house, he said, oh, we should do a, a dome window on your house. And my eyes lit up and I said, yeah. So yeah, and then we had to build it and I figured out just how, how tough that is. So he helped me cut the timber and, and then I kind of took it all back out to the, the farm and screwed and glued and sanded and routed. And yeah, look, the amount of hours I put into that window, uh, it's, it's just insane and it was pretty st um, frustrating at the time but I'm very happy that I, I persevered and, and went through with it because it certainly grabs a lot of attention and you know, it makes me pretty happy when I wake up next to it looking out into all the, the coloured glass. So uh, It's absolutely striking there but I can definitely see how much labour would have actually gone into constructing that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another thing that I'm noticing about this house though is that for the size of your house you seem to have a pretty decent solar set up on the roof. I do. What is the solar situation on this home? Yeah, so I filled the whole roof. Um, both sides of the roof have two 310 watt panels. So that's over a kilowatt in total. Um, and then on the front of the hitch, I've actually got a box which has got my batteries, my inverter, charge controller, you know, and all of the other electrical componentry to make it all safe and, and legitimate. So I'm so stoked that I've been able to run all my power tools and blenders and the limits are, are quite high for a tiny house solar system or anything comparable on a you know a camper van or caravan. And I've got to say as well, the timbers that you've used on the tiny house there, these just look super eclectic but so good <laughs> yeah look it's a real mix of just whatever fell into my palms at the time some of the raw timbers are cypress pine and they came from a sawmill out in gippsland near where i was and they were happy to let me rummage through their off-cut piles from about 10 years of milling so that was great uh, and then the other ones are a collection of both weatherboards and skirting boards actually from old houses in melbourne so yeah there's just some real gold coming out of those old renovation sites and if you can figure out how to spark up a conversation or look in a skip bin then um yeah that's the kind of thing you can expect to find 
So there's a lot of reclaimed materials that have gone into building this home then? Yeah, I'd estimate around 80, 90%. It's hard to put your finger on it. There's certain things like screws and bolts that I just went new with. I don't want them to rust and corrode and compromise the life cycle of my building. But in terms of timber, uh, and windows and doors, uh, it's pretty much all recycled. I like using reclaimed materials. Or the way I started doing carpentry with reclaimed materials is it feels as though there's nothing to lose because you can grab a pallet or something from someone's verge collection that they're throwing out that's left over from their project and take it home into your backyard and just learn with it. And if you stuff it up, it doesn't matter because you can just get rid of it and start again. Like you're not spending big bucks on brand new timber. So that was just part of my motivation. And, and also just being aware of how much of the development industry's renovations and demolitions just goes straight to landfill. And so I was ready to just sink my teeth in and um, yeah, do a bit of denailing and, and get creative with um, you know what scraps I could use to build my house. Well, I can't wait to see the inside. All right, let's go. Oh, wow. Immediately walking into this tiny house, that feature window just dominates the room, doesn't it? It sure does, yeah. It's a little bit different. <laughs> And the way that it brings all of that colour into the house is so special as well. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like it. You can see already just walking into the space the huge array of materials that you've found from all over the place, including some real treasures like that lead light window up there. Yeah, look, I was really lucky. I had a um, building site between friends' houses that I was walking past on a daily basis for a while in Melbourne and struck up a conversation with a lady gardening and it turned out um, they had a bunch of stuff left over from a big renovation and it was an old like estate mansion house um, that used to be the Collingwood Mayor's house actually so yeah I got the beautiful lead light and a door and a bunch of old windows and and fittings like the knobs on the uh the drawers behind you there oh, you know yeah. just really intricate high quality bits that it might be a hundred or more years old so that was exactly what I wanted um, and to get it for free was just uh, a big win. So this is a four meter long tiny house that's not a huge amount of space to work with tell me about the home your layout and some of the decisions that you made in the design. Yeah look it's a small space and and I decided not to have a loft or squash in a bathroom so I made conscious compromises about what was most important and so like having a high ceiling, for example, makes it feel a little bit bigger. Uh, if I had had a loft in, in such a small area, it would feel a little bit more cramped and not as light. So yeah, I really like how it kind of feels like a mini church or, you know, it's got quite an open feel to it, even though it is only, you know, four by two effectively. Yeah. So then tell me about your lounge space. You've got this little, little seating nook here. Yeah. Look, there's storage underneath, which is great for all the other uh, stuff like yoga mats and the vacuum cleaner that need to be kept out of the way. But yeah, I just wanted to have a couch, you know, that uh, you could sit and relax. I don't really have a dining table inside. So this is kind of the hangout if it's raining outside. Otherwise I've got the, uh, the outdoor area and some, some chairs and tables that I can set up for an alfresco. Great, and right next to you there, you've got the fireplace. Yes, the pot belly was very important. I was in Victoria at the time and struggling with the cold weather. So um, it's great to have in case I end up going back to a colder climate. But even up here in the Northern Rivers of New South Wales, you know, in the middle of winter, it does get quite cold and this has definitely come in handy. And I've got to say as well, for the size of this tiny house, I am really impressed with the amount of kitchen space that you managed to build in. Yeah, thanks. Look, I love cooking and, um, you know, it's something I definitely prioritise in the design, having a a kitchen bench that was most of the uh, length of the house up into my bed. Yeah, so I can do most stuff in here. I've got a fridge, I've got a cooktop. The only thing I'm really missing is a, an oven. Nice big sink space here as well. Yeah, look, I wanted a proper household sink. So it's a full size one with the double sink, uh, you know, so you can do your dishes and then rinse them in clean water. Um, but I wanted to reclaim that bench space when I needed a bit of extra space to be cooking or chopping veggies. So, um, yeah, I've just made these two chopping boards which fit over and give me both options. So where do you get your water from here? Yeah, so at the moment I've got a 35 litre glass Demijohn tank that's sitting under my bed and it's plumbed up by a water line running through here to my kitchen tap. So that's just a pump tap. Um, so yeah, at the moment there's no um, hot water in the house and there's no pressure. But look, it's been pretty good up until now and it, it gets a bit frustrating sometimes when you have to boil the kettle to the, to the dishes or fill up the tank if you run out. But it's definitely made me a lot more mindful of how much water I use. And then is that an old locker you've got there? It is. I got this out of an op shop and it actually came from a police station. So it's got lots of nice hanging space inside and it's already got the rail. So it's like a wardrobe. 
And then your sleeping area. What a lovely space with the geodesic window there and of course the guitars in Pride of Place. Yes, it's my little nest. Um, makes me very happy to, to be in this space, whether it's reading a book or, or waking up in the morning. Just um, all the, the beautiful things in my life are just, you know, around me. And then it looks like you've managed to fit a lot of storage under the bed as well. Yeah, look, it's huge. I can actually lift the mattress up and the slats uh, lift up and down. Otherwise, I can just use this curtain here and, and remove things. It depends how deep in there I need to get and I've got most things in baskets or containers so I can make the most of the vertical space because the bed is quite high so I can fit a lot under there. So what would you estimate the actual cost of this build was? I think all up it would have cost a maximum of $10,000. I have saved all of the receipts but haven't had the time or motivation yet to go through them and try and add it all up. Um, but the big ticket items like the solar system, the trailer and the upgrades, um, that also includes a couple of specialists for labour like engineers and, and trailer builders who I needed help from to weld and, and retrofit some of the trailer components. Tell me a little bit about the process of building this tiny house because you just kind of chipped away at it bit by bit to sort of help make it more affordable, didn't you? For me, it was like creating a carpentry DIY apprenticeship. This is where I've cut my teeth and learned a lot of my skills. I would probably spent two or three years before building this house working on other tiny houses and other natural builds. So I, that was with the aim of, of getting enough confidence to have a crack myself on my own. But in the end, you know, I was in a, a network of people who were very handy and, and I was lucky to have some great mentors and friends who were happy to come on board and give me assistance when I needed otherwise I was just out on the farm chipping away and it took about two years to build it. And now you have this absolutely gorgeous home to call your own. Yeah look it's my wildest dreams come true and moving into it has just been the most fantastic experience especially driving north to Byron Bay and, and having a bit of a, a break on the beaches has been fantastic with warm weather. So what's this up here? Um, so this is an old antique uh, medicine cabinet that I got from a tip shop. It's the first antique I've ever bought. <laughs> it cost me $100, but look, wow. it's got beautiful old glass and uh, it's made by a craftsman, you know, probably 80 years ago. So I've just had all of my toiletries in here and it's been my little bathroom on the go until now. And now I've got the one outside. I'll probably be transferring some of that stuff over there and, and you know, the, the brushing of the teeth and the, the mirror might, might end up over there. Well, should we go over to the other building and see what you've done for your bathroom? Sure, let's have a look. I think the way that you've done this is so cool because in so many ways it's like the natural evolution of living in a tiny house. You've been traveling around in it, now you've found a spot where you're willing to be a bit more permanent and you can build your extensions. Yeah, look, I'm pretty happy. I've got a treehouse toilet and a bathhouse as big as my tiny house, so yeah, pretty chuffed. So this first part here is the toilet, is it? Yeah, this is uh, my treehouse toilet. Great, can we go see it? Yeah, let's climb up. Now talk about having a toilet with a view, huh? Thank you, yeah, this is my throne looking out into the trees. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> I love how you've done this. Can you talk to me a little bit about how you've actually built all this and how everything works? Sure, I guess I saw this cluster of healthy young gum trees and thought it would be beautiful to be looking out through the trunks. So I actually used one of the trees as a stump and then we've put in three other large stumps in kind of a rectangular formation. And we've actually lifted the base of the, the toilet floor up off the ground over a wheelie bin because it's a compost toilet. And the wheelie bins are a great way to, to use as a receptacle to take all of the, the waste while it's composting and then just wheel out and replace once you need a new one. Very clever indeed. And then you've got the old basin here as well. Yeah, look, I got this pink basin second hand and I um, just loved it. So I ended up actually finding another second one for the bathhouse next door and a pink bath too. Now, I really like the way that you've built these steps here as well. Can you tell me how you've done this? Yeah, look, I was very lucky to have access to some beautiful hardwood timbers that'll go pretty well in the, the weather. So um, yeah, just a matter of figuring out the angles and cutting notches in and using some big brackets underneath that are hidden to make it nice and strong. Really, really nice addition. And then this must be the bathhouse. It is, yeah, come on in. Wow. I love the way that you have just surrounded this whole room in windows. Yeah, I was joking around constantly saying I'm playing Tetris with windows and uh, that's kind of what it was like, but a lot harder because you've got to be millimetre perfect to make a window fit. And, um, you know, being recycled timber, a lot of it's bent and warped and same with the windows, the different shapes and sizes and being cut down and sagged. So I'm really happy that I was able to make it work and most of the windows actually open and close. Now, when you're building a bathhouse like this, 
it's pretty rare that you could just build it all out of windows because normally it has to be such a private space. But there's just no one around here, so why not do this? Exactly. I wanted to be looking out down the hill into nature, into the trees while I was lying in the bath or having a shower. So um, yeah, it's a beautiful aspect. How does it actually feel living in the tiny house now that you've got this as an add-on? Having a hot shower right next to my house has been a real breakthrough. <laughs> I bet <laughs> hot shower can make all the difference in the world, can it? Yeah, look, I mean, it's pretty good up here. I'm in the northern rivers of New South Wales in the summertime. I surf a lot, so I'm at the beach using a beach shower most days. And, you know, I've got a, another house on the farm where I can go use the bathroom. But to have it on your doorstep and, and have a bit of luxury and serenity built into the setup is, um, yeah, it's a real treat. Oh, look, I feel like I've retired early, hey? Um, especially after spending eight years in a desk job, working for someone else. Now I'm, I'm working for myself, earning a lot less money, but needing to spend a lot less because my rent's considerably cheaper. My living costs are cheaper. I've got all my power coming off my roof. Um, so look, I've never felt this liberated and happy in my life. Your tiny house over there was already so beautiful, but adding this completely luxurious space over here has absolutely completed the package. Thank you so much for sharing your incredible home with me. My pleasure, Bryce. This home is absolute proof that even with limited resources, you can go on to build some truly incredible things. The tiny house itself was already amazing, but now with the addition of this spectacular bathhouse, you can see that Emmett is well on his way to building his own tiny paradise.